looking out my window and, and I see a looming dark mass and I'm thinking, you know, there's something out there. So we, we just climb as best we can because we know there's mountains right in front of us and we can't see anything because we're in the clouds. And something does not feel right. right. You know, I'm looking at my airspeed and I'm doing my normal 60. My GPS was showing a ground speed of 120. CFIT. If you're not familiar with the term, it stands for Controlled Flight Into Terrain. What it means is flying a perfectly good aircraft into the ground for one reason or another. For a lot of us, these accidents fall into the can't happen to me category. We were, we were way too high, too close in and way too high, but, but we felt like, you know, you know, we can do anything, right? But although CFIT is fairly rare, there are scenarios where it's easy to get taken by surprise some of which we'll highlight here. Fortunately, you can avoid virtually all of them just by being aware of the issue and stopping to think about potential trouble spots prior to flight. Let's start with the big picture, then zoom in. Maps, whether they're printed on paper or displayed on a screen, are literally the big picture and the information they contain is the best tool you have for obstacle avoidance. As maps have transitioned into the digital world, they've also gotten smarter. Modern flight planners, for example, display your route of flight directly atop the chart, and some offer a profile view showing in detail any potential conflicts with terrain. Of course, most pilots already fly with GPS, and most units are able to display terrain in relation to the altitude of the aircraft. The same capability exists with tablet computers and even phones, usually for a lot less money than aviation-specific devices, and often as part of the same app that handles flight planning. Whatever your particular setup, and many are low cost or even free, the terrain awareness these tools can provide is invaluable. So display options aside, what should we be looking for? First and most obvious is the graphical depiction of terrain. Mountain ranges and other large-scale features are visible at a glance, and along with the terrain color coding lets you know generally what to expect. Second is the MEF, or Maximum Elevation Figure. This is the highest obstruction within each grid sector, plus a little slack. It's useful for altitude planning purposes, and it's a good thing to be aware of should you ever need to know at a glance whether you're high enough to clear terrain. Man-made obstructions like communication towers can cause issues as well. There are monsters lurking out there as high as 2,000 feet AGL. That's well within VFR weather minimums, so you don't have to be scud running to hit one. Keep an eye out for the bigger of the two tower symbols, and remember that even huge structures like these can be difficult to see under certain lighting and visibility conditions. Oh, and remember that missing the tower isn't enough. You also have to miss the much larger array of guy wires, which can be virtually invisible. The wind farm is a more recent phenomenon. New ones pop up all the time, covering thousands of acres with massive turbines, blades slicing 400 feet into the sky. That may not sound very tall, but when you consider that turbines are often situated on ridge lines and other high ground, well, you get the picture. If you have an app that has terrain awareness, that's an excellent tool to use in, in pre-flight planning and in route awareness, situational awareness, understand where things are going to be. Even a handheld GPS with some uh, additional terrain information would have been you know, much better than just trying to figure it out via a sectional and a airport facility directory uh, entry. Now, let's zoom into the most critical spots for obstacle avoidance, the arrival and departure areas. There are two important questions here. One, are there any tall structures or terrain in the immediate airport area? And two, are there any reasons why you'll need to either descend earlier than normal before landing or delay your normal climb after takeoff? The first question is answered with a combination of sectional and or terminal charts, airport diagrams, and the chart supplement formerly known as the AFD. 
We are looking for terrain features, tower symbols and altitudes, and notes about either. What about the second question? Is there any reason to descend early or delay climbing? For VFR pilots, invisible obstacles like Class B airspace shelves can easily lead to terrain or obstruction conflicts. So can weather, a low cloud deck, for example. That's where you need to pay attention to that smallish ridge line or tower you might otherwise have skimmed past. Chart notations can also provide important clues. For example, if you see RP or right pattern in the airport information block, pay a little more attention. One of the reasons airports use right-hand patterns is high terrain. Uh, now I think I would get on Google Earth or another satellite map company and, and you know, if I can put myself on the ground there and then do a 360 degree spin just to see what might be out there. Maybe even getting on a flight sim and just taking a, a short flight into that airport just to see what's there. And uh, uh, that would be very helpful. IFR flyers still want to look closely for obstructions. But in most situations where there are special issues, they have the benefit of defined procedures. Obstacle Departure Procedures, or ODPs to be exact. These provide specific routes, altitudes, and climb requirements. Even in visual conditions, following the ODP ensures adequate obstruction clearance, which is always good to know, especially if you're unfamiliar with the area. And of course, VFR pilots can use them too. For IFR arrivals, the best strategy is a thorough approach briefing, familiarizing yourself with critical altitudes and being fully aware of the arrival and missed approach procedures. One quick reminder, absent specific instructions from ATC, you're required to be established on the approach before descending to a published altitude on the procedure. That means being on one of the heavy, dark lines on the approach plate. Flying at night has numerous disadvantages from an obstruction avoidance standpoint, some less obvious than others. For example, some night CFIT accidents happen because the airplane hits the ground short of the intended runway. This typically happens at isolated airports where the runway lights are the only lights, the so-called black hole approach. There are two main items to look for here. First, when flight planning, take note of the airport surroundings and runway equipment the type of runway lights, whether they're pilot controlled, and whether there's vertical guidance. If it's out in the middle of nowhere, be on guard. Be even more on guard if there's no vertical guidance, like VASI or PAPI. If there isn't, and your instrument rated, it's worth looking to see whether the runway has an approach with vertical guidance you can use as a backup. If there's nothing, it may be better to wait for daylight. Another nighttime concern is the relative width of the runway. Be on the lookout for runways that are unusually narrow for their length. For example, you might see one that's over 7,000 feet long, but only 75 feet wide. At night, absent other visual cues, your brain will tend to interpret that skinny shape as an indication that you're high on the approach. To make the sight picture match what you're used to, you'll tend to fly a lower glide slope, sometimes right into unlit terrain even more than normal. If something doesn't feel right about an approach at night, be ready to throttle up and go around. Sometimes pilots run into terrain not because they didn't see it, but because they couldn't avoid it. Particularly in mountainous areas, high density altitude means anemic aircraft performance. The severity of the hit often takes pilots by surprise, and leaves them little or no ability to cope with additional factors like icing and downdrafts. In that thin air, the performance of your aircraft is so diminished, you better have an out because you're not going to have power. This is not one of your options. Um, if you fly any amount of time in the mountains, and even relatively bigger equipment, 185s or caravans, it still happens. So you've got to be an aviator such that you have a way to get out of that descending air issue. Time spent with the POH helps, but you'll find that seeing a 50% longer takeoff distance on paper and experiencing a 50% longer takeoff roll in the cockpit are two very different things. High density altitude does more than just increase your takeoff roll and reduce your climb rate. Because true airspeed increases relative to indicated airspeed at higher altitudes, 
It also flattens your climb gradient, the altitude gained for every mile over the ground. That means long climbs, big wide turns, and a temptation to climb at dangerously slow airspeeds because it feels like you're going faster. Add it all up and it's easier to see how pilots end up crashing into mountainsides in broad daylight. Uh, to be able to do a box turning in a canyon, it is, it is frightening for most people until they actually see how close you have to come to the rocks to make that work. So I recommend and really recommend there are some really great trainers, and experienced flight instructors out there, get the experience from somebody that's been there and done that. CFIT accidents are really not very difficult to avoid, but staying safe does mean thinking ahead and actively considering the possibility of a mishap. We've been holding and we were tired and all those factors together get into that judgment decision um, that hindsight we wouldn't have done. Are you flying to an unfamiliar airport at night? Shooting an approach to an airport in hilly terrain? Flying VFR under a low cloud deck? Scenarios like these are when your internal terrain awareness alarm should be going off. Take your time, consider a few what-if scenarios and use the resources available to you. You'll get there safely and spare yourself any uncertainty along the way.